Importing text into Mac Caption is easy. All you do is you start off with a, a text file. And let me just take a look at this text file. It's a plain text file with some lyrics or um, it could be a script as well. And all you do is you drag it into this section over here, which is the caption section. And you let go of the mouse and you get this uh, text import option. Um, there's different options here. You can treat each line of text as one caption. Let me show you what that looks like. So what happens is, see where the line ends over here, well, loved ones, that would be also the end of that caption. That's one way to import the text. Let me show you another way to import it. Once again, I drag it into this field. And I can actually combine text lines to form captions. And I have options to end the caption with a sentence punctuation or with a comma or semicolon. I can do a paint on and roll up. Let's uh, let's see what happens when I do roll up two. Notice by default, the maximum number of text rows for each caption changes to one because roll up captions have to be uh, split up into separate lines. If I go back to pop on, I can have two, three, up to four lines per caption. Under maximum number of characters for each line of text, I can go up to 48, but 48 is strictly set up for subtitles. Captions, for closed captions, uh, can only be up to 32 characters per line. We like to give some uh, leeway uh, up to the title safe in the screen, so we go either 28 or 26 lines, uh, characters per lines. Let me show you what that looks like. Hit OK. And now you can see that all the captions are split up into two lines. Importing video into Mac Caption is very simple. You just simply start off with a QuickTime compatible file format. Let me show you here. I have an MOV. This is a DV MOV. Let me show you what that looks like. Or it could be an uh, MP3. It could be an AIF audio. It could also be an MP4 or pretty much anything QuickTime player can play back. We can import into uh, Mac Caption. And let me show you how easy that is. You simply uh, you want to have the video in this section. This is a preview window. You simply just uh, drag it, drop it, and there you have it there's the video. You'll also notice that the video timecode is also displayed here. We can read the timecode track that Final Cut Pro or a similar editing software puts into the QuickTime video. I'm going to show you some of the basic features for formatting text in Mac Caption. Uh, the first uh, things I want, want you to focus on are the push and pull buttons these are these triangle up and down arrows over here next to each caption block. Um, the way they work is if you press the down arrow, these directly affect the last word of your caption block. So when I press the push arrow, which is a down arrow, you notice that the word the was pushed down to the next caption block. If I press the pull button or the up arrow, the word the gets pushed up again. Um, in this case, uh, I have two caption blocks here, one which uh, probably shouldn't stand on its own, and one that's uh, probably way too long for its own good. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to press the push button until I get the desired results. And there we have it. The next button I'd like to uh, show you is the these two arrows over here, they're called the compress and expand lines. Expand meaning the right arrow, the left arrow is a compressed line length. The way they work is, say for example, this caption at the left of the screen too, it seems like it's a bit long. I like that to be a little more centered. So what this does is it splits this caption up into two lines by pressing compress. I press it twice to get the desired results, three times. If I do it extreme, I can get up to four lines per that caption. And if I press uh, expand, 
I can, of course, expand it to fit as many words per line as I possibly can. And that's how those two work. The next features that I like to cover are the positioning of the caption blocks on the screen here, on the preview screen. And the way they work is basically um, you can move the captions anywhere you want on the screen using uh, these formatting left, center, and right, up and down arrows. Um, these are all found on the top here. Um, let's say though that you have a lower third, like for example in this portion of the video. So in this case, I can move the captions up to the top of the screen. Um, if I move them to the left, move them to the right, notice if I move them to the right, they should probably be right justified. The justification panel is over here, horizontal, vertical, and justification over here. And if I press the R button, that makes it right justified as well. The next basic formatting function that I'd like to show you is simply the italicize and underline. Um, basically the way it works is you have to actually select the text inside the caption block, press the I button to italicize, or U for underline. Now it's important to note you can do both. Um, there is no bold for captions, uh, but what we can do is we can press this button and this will actually make the captions blink when you um, put them on the TV screen. Now I'd like to cover some advanced features for text formatting here in Mac Caption. Uh, the first one I'd like to cover is how you can actually um, affect multiple caption blocks. Let's say all of these I want to move to the top. I simply click on this section of the text panel right in between the timecode panel and the actual caption blocks and I scroll down pressing the mouse to select all the desired caption blocks I want to move up when the lower third is present. Then I can press this button and you'll notice that they will all move up to the top of the screen. I can pretty much do that with any of these features um, for the top to the bottom to the left to the right and affect multiple caption blocks. I can also select all by pressing Apple A and all of the caption blocks can be selected and then modified in that fashion. Um, I can also do multiple expand and contract like say for example over here I can select all of those and compress caption blocks and they will all be compressed to um, at least as if I would press this once. The other things I can do here are um, let's say I have a caption block where two people are talking. In this case there's only one person on the screen but um, let's say I want to separate these caption blocks. I want to move this top line over here to the left uh, indicating that there's someone speaking from the left side of the screen and the bottom line I want it to be separated and moved to the right. So the way to do that is you can actually double click on the top caption and then move it with your mouse to the top left or wherever you want um, and then the other one I can double click till I get highlighted and from the corner I can actually move it to the desired spots on the screen so like say for example I want to move that to the right there you have it now I can actually move them together um, if I don't double click and highlight them by simply just dragging them from a corner. And that's how you can separate caption blocks uh, simply and easily. Uh, that feature is not limited to separating caption blocks. You can actually just uh, manually move a caption block anywhere to the screen by, by simply clicking on it, um, usually from the corner or something, and just move it to the left move it to the right or move it wherever it is that you want on the screen uh, to get the desired effect for your caption. So uh, you're not limited to formatting with these buttons over here. You can do it manually. 
as well. The next feature in the advanced text editing is how to insert a caption. Let's say in between this caption block and this other one, I have some music playing in the middle. So what I want to do is I can press this button over here, the insert caption block, and write the word music. Um, notice that as soon as I write it, it appears on the preview screen. Um, the other thing I can do now is I can select it and insert actual music symbols by going under um, format, insert music symbols, and let's do surrounding music symbols. And you can see that um, the music symbols then appear. And I can do that anywhere I want. I can actually insert caption blocks. I can delete caption blocks and so forth and so on. The other text feature that I'd like to cover is how you can do um, uh, all upper and lowercase. Let's say I wanted everything to be lowercase. I press Apple A to select all the caption blocks. I go to Format and I can select uh, sentence-wise upper and lowercase all lowercase, you can see how that works, or I can switch back to all uppercase. You can see that's very easy to do. The other features that are very handy is how in Mac Caption you can actually find and replace certain things. Um, this works just like your text editor. You can actually find a certain word uh, or words that may be misspelled or formatting and just uh, Go ahead and replace them all. It's very simple and very easy to do. Now that we have formatted our text and separated them uh, the way we want, we are ready to do the timing for the uh, QuickTime that we've imported into the preview window. Now to start doing the timing, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we're in timestamp mode. Um, when I press this button, you'll notice that the video starts to play. Um, the same thing happens when I press play, it automatically uh, goes into time, time stamp mode. Sorry. Uh, now the other thing you'll need to do is as you listen to the words that are being spoken or uh, at the beginning the music that's being heard is that you want to press the in button over here. Uh, shortcut on the keyboard is the I button uh, for in uh, time code. And let me show you how that works. Let me do just a few more. press the I button again as soon as I hear her speak. I'm at the left of the screen, so captions of what I say appear at the left of the screen too. Now I'm at the right of the screen, so my captions appear at the right. I also can press the uh, pause button by pressing the space bar on the keyboard just like you would in QuickTime Player. Uh, now it's important to note that as I press the I button, as I was going through the caption blocks, they automatically cascade down. And if I press the I button or the in button on the next caption, it automatically sets the out time for the previous caption block. I can keep doing that all the way till I get through my entire captions. In the event I uh, make a mistake and say I, I hit it a little bit too late, I can simply go to that particular caption type in the, the correct time code or I can simply just uh, retime it by um, going to position deselect position video to select the time code and then now I can just go to that particular part of the caption just rewind it I'm at the left I'm at and then just uh, hit the old I button again you'll see that the new time code appears now, if you're like me, you want to get through the timing portion of the video as fast as possible. And a good way to do that is by pressing the J, K, and L keys on the keyboard. The J, K, and L keys work just like in Final Cut Pro or in QuickTime Player. They speed up, um, by pressing the L button, they speed up the time of the actual video. So let's go ahead and, and uh, give that a shot. So captions of what I say 
right here at the left of the screen too. So you can see that it actually speeds up the video and I can still hear the audio, but it's, you know, set up between two times, four times, six times, eight times. As many times I, as I press the L button on the keyboard, it will speed up the actual video and I can get through like an hour uh, worth of captioning in about you know 20 minutes or so. So if you're fast enough with the keyboard by pressing the I button, this will really help your workflow and get you through your captioning project really quickly. Now that I'm done with all my timing, I can check my timing by pressing this button over here below the preview window called Auto Sync. If I press it, it will actually go through my video and show me where I place my captions. I'm at the left of the screen, so captions of what I say appear at the left of the screen too. You'll see that it will actually keep going all the way down throughout the entire video and show me exactly my timing so I can double check it. This is really useful because if I want to make a change or bring a caption block or make any any formatting change, they'll reflect upon the auto sync. And that's really a key feature of Mac Caption. Previewing your captions before they go to tape or before they uh, go onto the web or wherever it is that you're going to deliver. If I want to check a particular part of my timing, I don't have to start always from the beginning of the video. I can simply um, either scroll to the part where I want to check and hit auto sync from there. Captions of what I say at the top, so that my name is not covered by captions. Or I can actually search it by caption block. Let's say, for example, um, I wanted to uh, search it for where this caption block appears when a new caption pops on. I can go to special, position video to select the time code, and then you'll see that wherever I am, um, I start, that's where the video is going to start as well. Old caption disappears. This is a paint on caption. This is a paint on caption. This is a paint on caption. Caption disappears. When a new caption pops on, and block is painted on the screen from left. Hi, I'm going to show you a new tool that can be used with Mac Caption. It's called AutoTime. And this new tool allows you to quickly synchronize your text with your video. In other words, it analyzes the audio from your video and accurately provides time code automatically to your transcript. To take advantage of that, you need two ingredients. You need your video file and the transcript file of that video. Now the video file can be anything that's compatible with QuickTime. You can simply drag and drop that into the video preview area of Mac Caption. The transcript is a simple plain text document that can be saved as a .txt. Now to bring that in, you simply drag and drop it onto the text area and import it using the combined text lines to form captions. Press OK and that begins to populate. Now it also formats the text so that it is title safe and adheres to the strict guidelines for closed captions for television. Once that is populated you simply use the new tool of auto timing to populate the time code. Let me show you where that is. Go to the top menu under time code and select auto time. What this does is it launches an applet that actually analyzes the audio and the speech in the audio and accurately times your text to that speech using timecode. It also analyzes the accuracy and tells you a confidence percentage. Once I hit OK, 
the timecode is then populated automatically to your text, including with durations. At this point, I can press the auto sync button and check the accuracy. Well, it is wonderful to see all of you here today. Uh, to be with all of you, uh, I want to make some special acknowledgments. Uh, we've got some legislators here who have been fighting on behalf of uh, the disabilities community for a very long time. And now I'll check the last part of the video to see how well it did. Press auto sync again. Each of us has a role to play in our economy. Each of us has something to contribute to the American story. And each of us must do our part to continue on this never ending journey towards building a more perfect union. So, as you can see, the timing is pretty dead on. In some parts, it might be slightly off depending on the quality of the audio, which case you can tweak that in the Mac Caption interface. If you want to move the text around, you can also tweak that. For example, there was a lower third at the beginning of the video. So if we wanted to bring well, the captions up during that lower third, we can do so. Today, uh, to be with all of you, uh... So we can take those two captions and bring it slightly above the lower third so that we don't block it. And now you're ready to export to a variety of different formats for the web, DVD, television, and tapeless delivery to server-based environments with closed captioning.